Hello. Hello. Thank you. I like interactive things. Hi there. My name is Victoria Fisher, and today I'm going to talk about how we're using Qt at Mercedes-Benz. We have about 10 minutes together, give or take, so I'll try and make it kind of quick and compact. First, of course, you're probably wondering who is this purpled hair goofball up on stage? And how long until the after party? Will there be food? I can answer two of those questions, but while we still have some time together, I'll explain how we're using Qt at Mercedes-Benz and Wayland. Let's begin. First, who's Victoria? Hi, I'm Victoria. I live here in Berlin, but I originally come from the free software world. Before Berlin, I was in San Francisco, where I once played hide and seek with Chelsea Manning for an art. A long time ago, though, I was a major KDE contributor where I maintained Phonon GStreamer. How many of you have heard of Phonon or used it? More hands than I expected. Good. Uh, it was a cool project. I liked working on it. That's where I come from. Unsurprisingly, my interest in multimedia software led me to hosting a chiptune radio show on the internet called Pulse With Mornings. It's very fun. I still do it. But nowadays, I'm an engineering lead at Ambition part of Mercedes-Benz. My team is called the HMI Enablers, which probably doesn't tell you much. Well, we are your friendly neighborhood pixel plumbers. What does that mean? Well, we sit between the GPU and the user interface. Every single pixel goes through my team because we deliver Qt and Waylon to Mercedes-Benz. And input event. So let's talk about delivering Qt. What does it mean to deliver Qt? We don't make Qt. We don't write Qt, obviously. But we're all here because we use Qt. And what does it mean to deliver Qt? Well, first, Qt is already quite fast. Everyone here knows this. Nobody's going to contest that. Qt is ridiculously fast. It's very fast. But what if we made it faster by putting it in a car? Physically faster, very fast. But we could make it even faster, because the car is driven by Waylon. And here at Mercedes, our cars are driven by Waylon, specifically cute Waylon. And it is glorious. But don't just take my word for it, though. We can actually quantify how glorious this future is. Let's have a mathematical segue. Everyone knows that bigger numbers are more impressive. So let's look at some big numbers. This is Mercedes AMG GTS, top speed of which is 316 kilometers per hour. And if you do the math, our displays operate about 60 frames a second. Follow the conclusion there. That's about 683 frames per kilometer. That's a very large number, isn't it? and therefore quite impressive. Thanks, Cute. <laughs> Let's talk about delivering Wayland and Cute. Delivering Cute is tremendous speed, absolutely tremendous speed, isn't all that we do, though. My team also delivers things that maximize the potential of Cute. For example, Wayland. But what does that mean? Everyone knows that Wayland is just a protocol, right? It's not really a tangible thing you deliver to the system. So what does it really mean to deliver Wayland and Qt together? Well, it means we deliver custom Wayland extensions in both AppMand and in our Wayland clients. Oh, you want to handle joystick events, gamepad inputs, warped HUD displays on a windshield? Easy peasy. We produce those. Qt Wayland makes it very easy to do this. We even provide QML APIs to our extensions. But that's not all. There's still more to delivering Qt and Wayland than just extensions and QML plugins. Because at Mercedes-Benz, at Ambition, we're not just delivering Wayland as a protocol. We're delivering it as the platform. Because, well, let's face it. Nobody, except maybe the people in this room, nobody buys a car because it uses Qt. 
They don't buy a car because it uses Unity or Java or Glib or Flutter or any specific technology for that matter, or even Linux, I'm sorry to say. Content is king, and the people, they crave their Netflix. There's one big problem with that, though. Mercedes does not produce content. So how do we bridge that divide between producing a platform and the people and they want their, con want their content? So here's an example of what it means to deliver Wayland and Qt as a platform. First, it's pretty unrealistic to ask Netflix to rebuild their DRM-enabled apps in a different toolkit for our bespoke platform with wildly different APIs and whatnot. They want portability. Qt Wayland can give them that. It also means that we can enable apps that aren't even written in Qt to run on the system. For example, apps written in Unity or on the Android platform. Let us provide access to a massive ecosystem of content for consumers. Again, content is king, after all. And with Qt Wayland, we become gods capable of anointing new kings. In the traditional IVI architecture, Everything in the UI lives in one process. It launches all the apps, it decodes the video, it manages the GPU, input, all that, everything. Every single pixel goes through this interface. It's something of a big monolith. It's also usually tailored specifically for the hardware platform in use. There is a problem here, though, of course. I'm sure you can find it. You can't just take this code base, throw it on a new hardware platform, and expect to see pixels. It doesn't work like that. This also means that as long as the system UI is so tightly integrated with the Wayland compositor, we do have some stability risks. For example, if the system UI dies, well, the compositor dies. And if the compositor dies, nothing reaches the GPU. And if nothing reaches the GPU, we have problems. You get unhappy customers, or worse, new bugs you have to triage and do intake on. And this is Germany, which of course means there's paperwork to fill out. There's forms. We want to avoid that as much as possible, even if the forms come in the shape of a JIRA ticket. So what if we de decoupled the Wayland compositor from the system UI? It makes sense. Minimizing the defect surface area increases this overall stability. If the UI crashes, the apps keep running. It's beautiful. We've compartmentalized the risk, which is a big thing in automotive engineering. You want to reduce the impact of such things, which is why at Mercedes, at Ambition, we're introducing a world-class Wayland compositor to the car. It's built on Qt. Many of you are familiar with it. Some of you might even be using it right now. First, a video. Some of you have seen this before. That's right. We're bringing Quinn to the car. Yes, I'm sure you're absolutely overwhelmed by this new excitement right now. But before you bolt for the door and hit up your nearest Mercedes dealership, just up the street, by the way, let me explain. Quinn is how we're able to build a rock-solid platform for Qt and Wayland. Because for my team, developer experience matters. And if developers can't develop, then what's the point? Quinn is already on everyone's laptops. Developers already use it. They have it available to them. They can poke with it. They can play with it. They're used to it. We can even run our special Quinn plugins inside of a nested compositor setup because of Wayland, because of Qt Wayland. This also means there's no special configuration needed for AppMan, for Qt Application Manager, because it uses both Wayland EGL on the target and on the developer's laptop. It's fewer moving parts, far fewer moving parts. Developers also don't have to think about EGL or DRM or DMA buff 
or anything like that, like they had to back when we were using raw EGLFS. Except my team, of course. But that's kind of the point. We compartmentalize this risk. Just my team. When we have Quinn as a system compositor, we get that stability we need. All of the hardware quirks are localized to just one process. And what's better, those fixes for those quirks end up making their way upstream. This makes Quinn and Cute Wayland better, faster, stronger. It makes the world a far better place. Wayland is amazing. Cute is amazing. And Quinn is amazing. And with our powers combined, we become gods of content. And at Mercedes-Benz, we are. Or at least that's what I tell myself.